Hey there, Miss Kenyatta. How are you? How are you doing? Hello, Miss Brenda. How are you? Hola. Hey, Miss Chris Christiana. How are you doing? Davey, how are you? Hey, Miss Shirley. Thank you, Mr. Davey. I appreciate you. Hey, Nina. Well, hey, Tasha, how are you? Man, I wish you were coming out there to the conference. That'll be fun. Hey, Miss Christine, how are you? Okay, y'all give me just a minute. I'm trying to bring up my um, Instagram. And you know, Instagram sometimes is tripping like now. How are you guys doing? Hello, Laura. Hey, thoughts and feelings. Kay Smith, how are you? That's what I'm talking about. Hey, Darlene. Well, thank you so much. Y'all give me just a second. I'm trying to trying to get this up and going. This take me a few minutes. I don't know why. Give me just a minute. I'm going to look up in just a minute. Hello, everybody. Um, give me just a second, y'all. I'm over here with Instagram, trying to get Instagram up. Now, give me just a second. Give me just a second. I'm going to look up in just a minute. Give me a minute. Hold on. I'm trying to get my Instagram up. Okay, let's see. Ah, there we go. How's everybody doing? All righty. There we go. How's everybody doing tonight? That's okay, uh, Telsha, because I'll be over there in California, and you'll be over there too. Hey there. Hey, Miss Chat. Miss Chat is going to be joining me in Dallas. I'm so excited. I get to meet one of my moderators. Hello, hello. Hello, Miss Brenda. Hello, Miss Michelle. Hey, Ernestine, how are you doing? How's everybody doing? Thank you so much for being here. You like my background? Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Miss K. Hey, Miss Wanda. Hey, just be real. There you go. All right. Well, I'm going to start the um, the clubhouse. So if any of you guys have clubhouse, I'm going to talk to everybody. You know, I do my little teaching, my little lectures. And then after the lecture is over, I ask, you know, if anybody wants to ask questions. And then I usually cut off the cameras and then I go over to clubhouse. So I'm going to turn on clubhouse. Okay. You have to excuse me. I'm a little tired. Just for real, don't let me go over 9.30. I think you're two hours ahead of me, so don't let me go over 9.30. Hey, Miss Rosemary, how are you? How are you doing, beautiful lady? How are you doing? Hello, everybody. Well, hello there, uh, Mr. Keith. How are you doing, sir? From Columbus, Ohio. All right. All right. Okay, and those of you that have Clubhouse, y'all have to excuse me until I get to talking. Ooh, I'm a little sleepy. I'm sorry. Good evening, Miss Kelly. How are you? Y'all, don't let me go past 930 because I have some uh, mommy stuff to do. Hey, Miss Mandy. Why, well, hey, Ernestine? You came on over here. Oh, Miss Ernestine getting the hang of uh, Clubhouse. Hi, Miss Mandy. And I am Susie. How are you, Sacramento, California? Okay. Okay. So 10.30, which is, so don't, don't let me go over 11.38. Don't let me go over 11.38, your time. Well, hey there, Seattle. Hey, Miss Nancy. Hey, Miss Seattle. Ann and uh, Pesha. I wonder why my stuff showed up in hallway. Let me look. Let's look here. Okay, well, that's all right. Let me see. What does it show up in hallway? Oh no, does it show? Let me look. Hold on, let me see something. Okay, that's all right. We're in the hallway, but that's okay. Well, hey, Alfreda. 
All right, well, let's get started. First of all, before I start, allow me to introduce myself to those of you that are new on my channel. Oh goodness, it's early in England. But allow me to introduce myself um, to some of you guys um, that may know me, may not know me. My name is Dr. Carmen Bryant. I'm a licensed mental health counselor here in the great state of Washington, Seattle area. I am also a trauma professional and I specialize in narcissist abuse recovery. My favorite thing to do, I love to educate people about narcissist abuse, those people that are coming out of it, those people that are still in it and need education about it because there's a lot of information that's going out there and sometimes the information, excuse me, sometimes that information is um, is is not, I'm not going to say hearsay, it's not hearsay, but sometimes the information that you're getting is, is opinion because people have been hurt and so they give you opinion and they get your emotions all roused up. But you have to think at the end of the day, when you come out of that, after you finish listening to them or watching their videos, what has it done? Have you learned something? Do you feel relieved or are you just hyped up and you're angry or, you know, you're angry and you, and you have more hate in you. When you're watching somebody's video, always remember, did you get something out of it? And do you feel like you're being healed? Not that your wound is being picked open and you're still hurting at the same time. And so uh, I know. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry, y'all. I'm, I'm, I'm a little late because I just come off the road. Miss Telsha knows you come off the road. I get to the house and then I want to record and then I'm tired sometimes when I'm coming on. But I'm faithful. I'm sorry. And I don't drink coffee anymore. But I am faithful and I want to come in here and talk to you guys. And so before I get started, please let me remind you guys that there's a conference coming up July 31st in Dallas. I will be at the Hilton Dallas Lincoln Center at the Dallas Somebody emailed me in reference to the hotel. I did not think about contacting the hotel and finding out if they can give a group discount for those of you that want to stay at the Hilton where the conference is taking place. I will contact the hotel tomorrow and I will ask them if they can give a group rate. So um, I don't know if it's going to be under Dr. Carmen Bryant or Overcoming Narcissism. It's probably going to be under Dr. Carmen Bryant, the group that's with Dr. Carmen Bryant. So give me tomorrow. I will contact the hotel. And I will, um, and I will um, contact. I will ask them if they will give a discounted group rate for those of you that are deciding to stay at that particular hotel where the conference is taking place. Also, you guys know um, I will have guests. I will be um, the main speaker, and then I will also have guests. My friend Miss Bridget Griffin, which I will try to do an interview with her this Saturday. Um, an interview with Miss Bridget Griffin. She is a domestic violence uh, legal advocate. So she goes into the uh, into the court systems with the um, uh, survivors or those that are victims of abuse, and she sees a lot of cases with narcissist abuse. So thank God she is one of those advocates that understands um, narcissist abuse. She's going to talk to you guys about parental alienation, what and what not to do in the court setting. Uh, she's also going to talk to you guys about how to find a lawyer, what questions to ask. Can't come into court telling the judge or trying to convince the judge that. Um, that, you know, this is a narcissist. Judge don't want to hear all that. And another thing, you know, when you're calling for an expert witness, remember when you're calling for an expert witness, sometimes people have contacted me. They want me to come as a, they want me, they want to fly me in to court to testify before a judge uh, about, you know, as an expert witness about the person being a narcissist or about narcissism. Well, first of all, nine times out of 10, when you're calling the expert witness, the expert witness is the person that has diagnosed them with narcissistic personality disorder and they're going to tell why and they're going to give you an explanation about the, the the disorder so it's not a person that doesn't know anything about the person the expert witness is the person that usually is the person that diagnosed that individual or will read off of the information from the diagnosis of the person to tell them about what that diagnosis means and what the behavior is but she's going to talk to you guys about that then you have my big brother mr marcus monroe Who's going to be talking to you guys? So I tell you, ladies, you need to be there. You need to be online. You need to be there in person. Um, he's going to be online. He won't be able to fly in this time, but he's going to be online on Zoom. So it is the conference is taking place on Zoom as well. So you're going to get the live, and a lot of the speakers are on Zoom because I will be physically located in Dallas, and some of them are in uh, New Jersey and here in the Seattle area. And so he's going to be coming to talk to you guys, and his platform is called the Law of Mentality. And he's talking about this new group that is on the rise and they're looking for, um, what is it called y'all? You guys, you guys heard him speak before. It's not high dollar. It's not high dollar women. It's, uh, uh, not high profile women, but it's the six figure women. Those, 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 those high profile number 20, those, those women that are up there in the corporate, you know, they're doing things and they're 
profiling them. They're they're focused on them, but they're teaching these narcissists are teaching these men and and other narcissists how to um, not just manipulate, but how to dominate and how to get control of these type of women. And these are the type of women that they're after. And he's got a plethora of information. Then you have my big sister, Kathy Gibson. My life is intentional. She has a book out. It's called The Essence of the Aristocratic Woman. I encourage you guys to buy the book. She's an awesome, phenomenal woman, a phenomenal speaker. She loves to talk about relationship, confidence. She really is an encourager when it comes to women. So if you guys are broken, if you have friends that need to be there, I'm going to give you a deal right after this, what after I say this. But um, I'm going to give you guys a deal to make sure to get you guys there. And then, of course, our mother is going to be there. My spiritual mother, my mentor, my uh, leader. Um, and you guys know her is Helen Sadler from Your Destiny Helper. And she's going to be online and she's going to close it out. And so I do want you guys to be there. Now, this is a $3,500 conference. I'm giving this conference for those of you that are able to make it out there, general admissions for $280. If you're doing VIP with me, that means because it's from 8 to 6 p.m., 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. And we're going to do a working lunch because I'm going to make sure we get this beautiful Greek buffet. You will have anemones there, you know, drinks, coffee, uh, you know, to make sure that you guys are taken care of. And then if you are VIP at seven o'clock, we are going to, uh, it's going to be phenomenal. Yes, it is, Miss Kelly. Miss Kelly is going to be one of the people that's there to assist me. Um, so is Just Be Real. And I have friends of mine, Mr. and Mrs. Connie and Jeremy Jones. Uh, one of my friends is flying out, Miss Tiffany. Um, then I, uh, Miss Tiffany Rogers, she's going to be there with me. And also uh, Miss Tierra Carpenter is coming. And then uh, Just Be Real, Miss Kelly's flying in and my daughter's going to be there to assist me. Um, but also, um, I want you guys to know for VIP, which is $300, at 7 o'clock, we'll have limousines to come and pick us up and take us to a local steak and seafood, um, uh, one of my choosing, so that we can spend some time together and talk and, and kind of fellowship together. It's not, a, it's not a Christian conference, so you guys that are not believers, don't even worry about it. It's not a Christian. This is a Overcoming Narcissist Abuse Conference, and this conference is called Hidden in Plain Sight exposing the secrets and those of you that are going to be online is two hundred dollars to be online now check this out this is the deal that i'm going to give you guys for those of you and this is for even those of you that have already paid so if you have already paid you contact me just email me but um this is what i'm going to do for those of you that bring a group of five people if you bring five people then i will give that group rate at seven hundred dollars that means those five people are paying 140 dollars a piece so if you guys get five people, five people together, so even those that have already paid, if you bring four more people, you contact me and I will give you, you know, I'll give you back the portion that you paid, uh, which is, I think, one hundred and forty dollars. I give you that one hundred forty dollars back. However, you bring a group of five people, five people, and it'll be seven hundred dollars. So write it down. Seven hundred dollars for five people. Now, if you bring a group of ten people. You bring a group of 10 people, it'll be $1,200. That means each individual person is only paying $120. So if you bring a group of 10 people, $120, and you know there are some people that need to be at this conference. So a hundred, so that is $120 for 10 people. So if, But check this out. If you bring a group of 20 people, I charge $2,000. That means they're only paying $100 per person. Now, check this out. This is for those of you that are going to come. Now, if you're online, I'll give you the group the, the, uh, the uh, group rate as well. I'll give you the group rate as well. So if you get five, if you get 10, or if you get 20, so you guys write that down. A group of five people, $700. That's $140 per person. If you get a group of 10 people, that's $1,200. That's $120. And a group of 20 people, that's $2,000. And that's a hundred dollars per person. But check this out. I'm gonna put these group rates on. Uh, I have not updated my site yet. So the where the tickets are being sold, um, whoever the representative is for that group is gonna be one person that needs to pay for the group. But whoever that representative is for that group, I will um, contact that individual because I need the names and phone numbers of the individuals because they have to be put on the guest list. Because I will have my staff there, my assistants there, who will be checking off names. And if you do not have your name on that list, so whoever the representative is for this group, 
whoever the, the group representative is, you get the money for them and you pay the, the fees, but I will contact you to find out, or I will have one of my representatives contact you to get the names so that we can put these names on the um, guest list so that, uh, and number two, I also need to get a head count so that if we need to move to a bigger space or if we need to add more food onto the buffet. So I need that done, but you guys have to do that. And what I'll do is, is uh, when you guys register, I'm going to send your names over to my assistants so that uh, I'll probably have them contact you because they'll get your names. So if it's five people, I need all five of your names, phone numbers and information so that we have you on the guest list and so that we have your email and phone number. Okay. So remember, a group of five people, $700, that's $140 per person. If you do a group of 10, it's $1,200, and that's $120 per person. And a group of 20, that's $2,000, that's $100 per person. So those of you that have already paid, you are included, and you just contact me, email me, and then I will make sure that you get reimbursed. So, Or you, know, you have someone, if you take the money from them, you just take it out of there and just send me what what's left over. And we'll talk about that when we contact each other. Now, if you're wanting to do VIP and the reason why VAP is a VIP is a little more expensive is because of the fact that there, there are limousines involved with that. Now you are responsible for your own dinner, but for the limousine services, a lot of that is also going to let you're also getting the whole conference, but then the limousine services to take you to where we're going. So a group of five people is $1,400. So VIP that's 280. And a group of 10 people for VIP is $2,500. That's $250 per person. Okay. And so I will make sure I'm going to update um, the um, site and I will be contacting you. So if you register, I will be, I will have my team or I'm, I will contact, especially VIP. VIP, I contact you personally. Now the other groups, I will contact you or my team will contact you so we can get the rest of the information from you. Now, does that sound like a deal? Because I want to make sure that you guys come. I want you to come. And if you can't come, I want you to be online because you don't want to miss this. Too many people have been coming in and out of these relationships. And a lot of you guys have been involved with people that, you know, and you've had children. You've been trying to go to court. Some of you guys are getting ready to go to court. Now, she cannot provide you with legal advice. She's not in place of a lawyer. And the information that you're getting at the conferences is for information purposes. But a lot of you guys have been in these type of relationships and you have no idea how much damage it has done or things that you have been thinking, you know, because I will be, excuse me, I will be talking about, excuse me, uh, um, my clubhouse people, excuse me, the microphone is really, really close to my ears. So I don't know if you hear the, um, just be real. Do they hear the earrings? I don't know if you hear the earrings hitting the uh, microphones, but hold on a minute. I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. Let me take the earrings out. Okay. Take the earrings out. So I apologize. Those earrings are hitting onto the microphone for Clubhouse. So my apologies. Okay, there we go. So um, that's that's a, that's a good deal. Now, now, if you do an individual, then just do it individual. No big deal. We're going to see you there. I'm good now. I took the earrings out. Okay, so you guys ready? Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Everybody ready? Okay, everybody say you ready. You ready for the, for the teaching? You ready for the teaching? The topic for tonight is, is it possible to have brain damage after narcissist abuse. Thank you. I appreciate it, Ms. Karen. Of course it is. Of course it is. Let's see why. So I had to jot down some notes before I come on because this is a, this is a, I'm going to slow it down because you guys know I love, when I get excited, I talk really fast. Okay. Thank you. I talk really fast when I get excited. Okay. So first of all, understand that repeated emotional abuse, repeated emotional abuse can result because not every narcissist is physically abusive. That makes it harder when you're trying to explain your situation because most domestic violence centers or when you call in contact, they want to know if you're being physically abused. Physical abuse is more obvious most of the time, you know, and especially if you're being physically abused, you may have traumatic brain injury, you may have a head injury. That is a little more obvious. But when you're dealing with a narcissist, you know, a lot of times these narcissists it's not that they've gotten wiser. It's just they realize they gained some information where they stop physically abusing and then they just do the emotional abuse. All narcissists psychologically emotionally abuse. And this is, you know, with repeated emotional abuse and with, with or without physical abuse, 
can result in PTSD or complex PTSD. PTSD, as you guys know, is usually an event that has happened. Some type of traumatic event, sexual abuse, witnessing a murder, uh, domestic violence, um, some type of traumatic event that you have personally went through or you have witnessed that has caused trauma. And what happens, most people think that as soon as the trauma happened, right after the trauma happens is when you get PTSD. That's not true. That's called usually acute anxiety, uh, you know, post-trauma, but it's not post-traumatic disorder. Post-traumatic disorder usually develops after six months from the event and you keep reliving it over and over again. But repeated emotional abuse can result in PTSD or complex PTSD. Complex PTSD is when you are in the situation and it continuously happens. There is no one time happens and I'm suffering from this over a, a long period of time. Complex PTSD for many of you guys that are in narcissistic relationships or narcissistic personality disordered people, you know, whether it's your parents, loved ones, or your, your lover, your husband, wife, whatever, you know, whatever intimate relationship you may be in, you know, complex PTSD is when you continuously are going through it every day, all the time, all the time. There's never a break. You're constantly going through this, constantly going through this. So now emotional injury injuries shrink the hippo, hippocampus, the hippocampus in your brain. Your hippocampus is responsible for memory and learning. Um, it also consistent emotional abuse also enlarges, and remember I used to jack this word up in my earlier videos, amygdala. I'll sound real smart, amygdala, but it enlarges the amygdala. And the amygdala houses fear, grief, guilt, envy, shame. Now think about it for just a minute. So when we're talking about the hippocampus and we're talking about memory and we're talking about learning, a lot of you guys experience what? Brain fog. Where do you think that brain fog is coming from? The brain fog is coming from the shrinking of the hippocampus. You're having a problem, and I'm going to talk about it in detail. And then if you're constantly dealing with fear, grief, envy, shame, long after the event, your amygdala, your amygdala has enlarged. But I'm going to show you how this works, okay? So the hippocampus, it stores and releases memory. The hippocampus restores, I mean, stores and releases memory especially short-term memory. So new data enters into your brain and then that, that, that hippocampus is working with that new data, but now there's a decision in the brain whether to store it for permanent memory, long-term memory, or to forget it, right? Well, when that hippocampus is shrunk, you're having a problem usually with short-term memory. A lot of times you're having a problem with short-term memory. So you wonder why you're forgetting this. You can't recall this. You know, I have this brain fog. My thinking is not clear. Now, now you know that the hippocampus is involved, right? So now, uh, let's see. The University of New Orleans and Stanford University researchers um, conducted a study on patients. And these patients had the high, this had the, the uh, these particular patients with the highest baseline cortisol. Cortisol is a stress Hormone. That's when you see the old fat bellies on us, right? Big old chunky bellies. Um, but it's a stress hormone that's released, right? And and you can tell. So now when we see each other, we'll look around to me. Your cortisol, your cortisol is over uh, producing. Some of y'all just got a chunky belly because you had a lot of kids and you eat a lot. But some of that is from that stress hormone, and that belly gets big. But uh, so these patients, they did a study with these patients with the highest baseline cortisol, a, hor a stress hormone, and greater and the greater number of PTSD symptoms simultaneously, and they showed the greatest decrease in the hippocampus volume. So think about it. Cortisol levels are high, so stress hormones are high, and they had high number of PTSD sim symptoms, and they have the greatest level of decrease in the hippocampus volume, the size of the hippocampus had, um, had shrunk. So understand that a narcissist, and we talked about this in other videos, a narcissist always keeps you in that state of fight, flight, or freeze, fight, flight, or freeze, fight, flight, or freeze. So your stress levels are always high. You're always anxious. You're always, you're always, you know, they come around, you're anxious. 
they're in, you're walking on eggshells. It's like your stomach is constantly, it feels like you have this, you know, that, that excitement that you have in your stomach where oh, it's exciting as Christmas is exciting. I'm going somewhere else. Well, imagine that is turned on all the time and you're not even excited about anything, but it's just that, that, that high level of anxiety in your stomach. Sometimes it works all the way up your throat and it feels like, you know, like you, you're losing breath. You can't breathe. And it's like, it's almost, it's like a surge. It's like a surge of adrenaline or a surge of, of uh, anxiety goes up into your chest. Some of you guys even have, um, um, have panic attacks. So every time you get around them, it's like your energy is drained, but you're anxious. You're, you're constantly, you know, you're walking on eggshells. You don't know when they're going to go off. Just keep it quiet. Just do, but you're constantly, you just fidgety, 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 right? So a narcissist, every time you're triggered, the amygdala remembers the thing seen, felt, saw, or heard with each painful experience. So with each painful experience, it remembers that negative information from that negative experience, that painful experience. So that's why uh, I was reading somewhere online. It suggests for those of you that stalk them and always, yeah, hypervigilant, that's the word I was looking for. Yeah, a heart attack. For some people, it's like a heart attack. But that's why it re you know, it's recommended that when you go no contact, do not stalk them on the Facebook. Do not go look at their pictures. Do not go look and see what they're looking at. You know, when you uh, when you go and, and you look at these pictures and you find out there was some or someone else, it's almost like panic hits you, like you ran out of breath. And it's like you don't know what to do. You can't breathe. You can't sleep. You can't lay down. And all of a sudden, your memories are jilted. You know, I had one young lady say, and I and, and she allowed me to use this information. She said that when she found out that the narcissist was with another woman, he had gotten another woman she didn't know. She said at that time she had to go on a business trip. So they put them up in a hotel because they had to go on, you know, business meetings and stuff. She said for some reason she was in the hotel where the next door neighbors in the hotel must have been newlyweds. She said all night, all night she heard them having sex. She said, and it drove her crazy because she was having panic attacks because guess what it was associated with? She associated with her own experience of being with him. And then she associated with a new person. So everything was still a shock. So she's a mess. That's all she is. So she's tormented all night. She can't sleep. She can't sleep. She can't sleep. So just, yeah, adrenaline fatigue. Absolutely. Absolutely. But um, let's see here. So uh, that, that, that every time you're triggered, the amygdala remembers the thing seen, felt, saw, heard with each painful event. So it's not good to go look at photos, y'all, because it puts the two together. So it remembers. Now you know where it comes from, right? So some of the things that you end up going through, this is how you know, and, and the brain damage is not permanent. Just, just so you guys know, it's not permanent unless you continue staying in there to a point where you literally, a lot of people start having some serious brain injury, serious brain injury you know, because of the torment. Yeah. The torment is the word. Absolutely. Because of that torment. Um, and the longer you stay, the worse it gets, you know, the worse it gets. Um, there are people that have totally lost their minds and that's, I mean, that's the, the, the it's not a good term, but it's for lack of better words. You know, they're totally dissociated, totally dissociated from reality. They're not in their reality. Um, so some of the things that you notice that you experience yourself um, going through these traumatic events. Number one, denial. Denial is, is when you deny the severity of the trauma that you have gone through with this narcissist. And when you deny it, it is the only way that you can escape these traumatic or painful feelings. And so you deny that they exist. So a lot of trouble that you have with people that are coming in for help when it comes to you know, this type of trauma is they're denying the actual pain that they're going through or they deny the feelings associated with it. Cause you'll say things like I'm a strong person. I'll make it through. So you say a lot of things that are powerful and, and, you know, positive words, but what really what ends up happening is, is you have to be honest and say exactly what you feel. And that's what's good that you need to either journal and you need a therapist. That's why I tell you guys, Coaches are not therapists, mental health therapists. They are good and you need a coach, but for some people you need a therapist and that therapist is going to assist you 
because thank you so much, Telsha. That therapist is going to assist you because number one, they're going to confront your denial. And when you have to confront denial, that is a painful thing for someone to have to pick and prod. And it's not, it's not that they're forcing you, but they're making you accountable. They're holding you accountable for the feelings that you're feeling. And in therapy, I tell people, no, say it like it is. And of course, you know, you have a lot of people that are Christians and I understand that, or people that just don't believe in that word hate. But sometimes you have to be serious and just say, hey, I hate this person because that's what you're feeling at that particular time, even though, you know, in your heart is not true at this particular time. I just hate this person. I hate the person he's with. I hate what happened. I can't believe my parents, this and that. Sometimes you just have to be honest and get it off of your chest and you have to say what it is that you keep suppressing because the more you suppress it, the more it comes out in your behavior and your attitude. And sometimes it doesn't come out in your behavior and your attitude. It comes out physiologically muscle aches, fibromyalgia, migraine headaches, tension headaches, nerve issues, nerve issues in the back. Um, and you got, I'm telling you, it's good to get with a good trauma professional, a trauma therapist, so they can work you through this. And denial is one of the things that people struggle with because, you know, and then you really, I didn't love him that much. I really didn't love her that way. I didn't love him that much. It took me a long time to say, I was with this individual for 22 years and it wasn't until the last five years of the relationship that I learned to love him. That's how long I was in the relationship. And in the last five years of the relationship, I finally made up my mind that I was going to love this person. And as long as I didn't love him the, the, the way that you're supposed to love someone, he, he, was, he, he stayed. The minute I started, I loved him when I finally admitted, and it was the hardest thing to ever have to admit that I finally loved someone in my life. I finally decided I was going to love that individual. He acted a fool. Y'all, y'all, y'all know the story because all of us almost have the same story. He acted a straight donkey. Yeah, a fool. Acted a fool. You know, and then, and, and, and then it was over. It was over. You know, and so. For some people that have experienced that, sometimes you have to say to yourself, I wish I would have never started loving him because for you in your mind, he would have stayed. But you did your part. You did your part. You know you have feelings. You know you have emotions and you love somebody. And for those of you that had a hard time loving someone, you may have loved the wrong person, but you actually love somebody. So a lot of us can finally say, I actually love somebody for the first time. I love somebody. And when I did, they acted a straight don't eat ah, just a fool. Yes, just a straight fool. But you did it. But you did it, right? Okay, so denial is the first one. The second one is compartmentalization. When you compartmentalize, there we go. Compartmentalize. What you're doing is, is you're taking the trauma or the realism of the situation. And you, you you just you you put it away and only focus on the good aspects of the relationship. That's why you hear a lot of people say, but how is it that they're so horrible and I had good times? Well, that's how you got with them in the first thank you. That's how you got with them in the first place. Because everything about them wasn't horrible. You enjoyed the vacation, you may enjoy the sex, you may enjoy, you know, this and that, this. But the core person is not the good times. The core person is what you compartmentalize and put away. You put it away so that you don't have to think about it. And you focus on all the good attributes of that person. You need to put the person together as a whole. And the person as a whole, if a person loves you, they're not going to mistreat you, mishandle you. And for those of you that are trying so hard to make sure that you have, um, that you have a diagnosis for this person, stop trying to get a diagnosis. What you need to focus on is how is they treating you? And don't compartmentalize. You have to be honest. That's another thing that comes out in therapy. I'm a therapist. Is going for some therapists are kind of, you know, they're trying to hesitate about upsetting you too much. I'm the type, I'm going to confront you. Okay, first of all, I think you compartmentalizing. Let's talk about this for a minute because you're telling me all the wonderful aspects of this individual. Why are you in here talking to me then? If it was that wonderful and that great, why are you in here? But these are, okay, let's, we know all the good things. Let's go look at all the horrible things. You see what I mean? 
Let's look at all this. Look at all the horrible things that you keep putting away on this little shelf, you know, until you decide to go. And then you want to come back to it when they traumatize you again. So that's what I'm telling you that compartmentalization, it comes out in therapy. That's what you need somebody to confront that. The next one is projection. Now, listen, if y'all having a conversation that has nothing to do with what I'm talking about, I'll block you because that's very disrespectful. and That's very rude. If I take my time and I'm tired on top of that, if I take my time on here to talk to you, I ain't going to point no fingers yet. I ain't going to call you out yet. But that's very rude to have a whole conversation on a forum where I'm trying to bring people some information. Y'all having a total, I'm playing football and y'all over here playing soccer. Now, y'all, if you want to talk about what I'm talking about, talk about what I'm talking about to each other. You don't have a whole different conversation that has nothing to do with what I'm talking about. That's very rude and is distracting to people that want this information. Okay. Moderators, give them a warning. And, and if they keep doing it, go ahead and block them. I, I, I'm not into numbers. I'm into making sure that you guys get some information. Okay. But let's talk about projection. Now we, we learned about projection when we talk about how they project what's on the inside of them and projecting their bad qualities onto you. So there, you know, and I always tell you guys, pay attention to what they're saying, because when they thank you so much, pay attention to, um, you know, pay attention to um, pay attention to what they're saying, because what they're saying and accusing you of is everything that they are. This is how they are. You see what I'm saying? So what they project. But we're not talking about this type of projection. We're talking about your projection. When you project your good qualities onto that narcissist that is misusing and abusing you. A lot of times people will say, but they're, they're wonderful. They're this, and you project your compassion, your empathy, your listening skills. And that person is nothing like that. So you project all your good qualities on that person because that's how you stabilize yourself. That's how you make it in that horrible relationship or with that person. That is your justification as to why you're staying because you project your goodness onto them. Now, this is the last thing that I'm going to talk about. Oh, my computer almost fell over. Uh, hold on. I think the whole camera almost fell over. All righty. I don't know what's going on with my little camera, y'all. I'm sorry. All right. I think I'm straight. Okay. It may be a little crooked. Um, so the hippocampus, um, uh, let me look. Hold on. Okay. So you can regrow the hippocampus. So when, a sh when the hippocampus is shrunk, that hippocampus can be regrown. And some of the therapies that are available is EMDR, which is eye movement desensitization reprocessing, which helps uh, with regrowing that hippocampus to enlarge that hippocampus again. Um, also, uh, to, uh, you know, that uh, amygdala has, has increased and you want to shrink the amygdala down some. Uh, so for both of them is guided meditation aromatherapy, EFT, which is emotional, uh, emotional freedom technique. And so it is recoverable. It is recoverable. So don't, you know, it's not permanent brain damage. If you stay entirely too long, if you, Carla, please listen, please stay on topic or I'm going to block you. And I just said it a few minutes ago. It's very rude it's very rude while I'm talking about one topic to have a whole nother conversation of that, but off topic. If you want to talk about anything, talk about the topic that I'm talking about right now, because you're having a whole YouTube video by yourself. That right there can be discussed another time. Okay. But, um, as I was saying, so it's not like it's impossible for that to be that brain damage to be corrected. There is therapy out there that will help you that would help you um, uh, increase the, uh, uh, the the hippocampus and to decrease the size of the amygdala. And so that's what I'm talking about. Uh, that's what I'm talking about when I'm, I'm trying to read at the same time. I'm being, I apologize. You know, I'm gonna let the uh, moderators handle that because it throws me off. So I apologize. But yes, brain damage does not have to be permanent. But the thing about it is, you guys, is that the longer you stay in, the worse it gets. And your brain can only handle so much. You know, the brain likes to correct itself. The brain wants information. The brain wants to repair itself. And sometimes the way that that brain does it, you know, it'll cut off memory. You know, it, it's doing what it can to survive. But you got to help your brain before the, the, the injury is permanent. And you don't want permanent injury in your brain. 
where you can't think, you can't talk. I've seen people that have went into almost catonic, catonic, catonic states. They can't, sometimes some of them, it was so much trauma that they literally blacked out to a point where they didn't know where they were at. Psychotic, well, they're, and, and really, even though, you know, schizophrenia is usually diagnosed in your late 20s, there are some people that have psychotic breaks and they have psychotic breaks and they have psychotic breaks where they didn't come back to their normal self again. They got stuck in those psychotic breaks and they could not come back out of that psychotic breaks. It's like they're stuck in psychosis, permanent psychosis. And so I'm telling you guys, it's best to get out while you can. It's more painful to stay in the situation because it affects you physiologically it affects you psychologically. It affects your your um, your uh, emotional state, and you also are teaching your children on what to to expect in a relationship or what to do in a relationship. If you don't break fear and you free, and you don't show them healthy boundaries, or you don't get yourself out of it, then what do you think your children are going to do? Because because nine times out of ten, they're going to get in similar relationships as yourself. So you, they will be in similar relationships. And when they get into similar relationships as yourself, your heart is going to be broken because you're going to watch your children relive what it is that you've been through. And what if you were able to recover, but what if your children don't? And you're watching them repeat your life. So parents, this relationship, once you have children, the relationships are not just about you anymore, but it's about your kids. And the hardest thing is, is breaking free. Yes, it is. And staying free. But the same is hard for those that are drug addicts and alcoholics, getting out, getting out and being free from their addiction. Likewise with a narcissist. So hopefully this has helped you guys tonight. I'm going to jump over to Clubhouse. Uh, I'm going to give you guys about five minutes. Give me about five minutes and then I'm going to jump over to Clubhouse. Okay. So I'm going to jump over to Clubhouse. So I'm going to give you five minutes. Give me five minutes, moderators, and you guys can ask me some questions. And then I'm going to come over to Clubhouse and talk to my Clubhouse guests. Yes, break the generation, generational pattern. Absolutely. Um, I was going to come and talk to you guys also about um, DNA. Um, when, when you have been in trauma for so long um, that it actually affects your DNA, you pass it on to your children. Um, and I'll talk about that at a later time. I may even talk about it at the conference. Who knows? There's only a limited amount of time that I have to talk at the conference. but. Um, you can pass that on to your children, you know, uh, how, uh, especially if you are an anxious person, if you've been in trauma and you're constantly in anxiety. Um, I did my dissertation and when I did my dissertation, one of the things came out is that people with PTSD that are prone to PTSD and, you know, and you have some that are just, that just don't get PTSD after trauma. A lot of them are, it's just like with alcoholism, you're pre predisposed to alcoholism because you have family members that were um, alcoholics. Likewise, people that have health issues like heart issues, diabetes, high blood pressure, you know, heart conditions, you can find it within the family. Likewise, with people with PTSD, you can find anxiety, PTSD, and other mental health issues within the family. Genetically, it's passed forward. You are so welcome. You're so welcome. Thank you for being here. Will change of environment away from the narc health, especially? Yes, absolutely. You just stay no contact, though. Don't change your environment and still communicate with them. But changing your environment, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, you don't have anybody but narcissist people in your life. You may have to cut them all off. There's nothing wrong with being by yourself. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with you being by yourself. Um, if you put a long question on there, I might not get it because the questions are coming really fast. You have to break the question down, just make it a little uh, smaller. You are so welcome. You're so welcome. Um, uh, you said, what about CPTSD? Is it possible to pass it on? Well, it is PTSD. It is PTSD. It's just the PTSD you never recover from because you're constantly in the PTSD. You're constantly being traumatized. Thank you so much. Preventing, uh, preventing. Okay. Preventing. Oh, recidivism. Recidivism. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm not sure what that response was to. Um, uh, I don't know how to stop cortisol. I have not went to go research that some. That's a good question. I need to go check it out myself. Um, 
if you guys like going to naturopathic doctors, you know, naturopathic doctors will, um, will recommend certain type of, um, uh, supplements. Absolutely. Rest is resilience, which can be learned. Absolutely. Thank you so much, LaDonna. Our, LaDonna, thank you so much. I appreciate you. It is normal to still function. Okay, I missed it. I'm sorry. Uh, for trial against narc, what are layman terms to help jury understand narc abuse? Um, uh, Joy, I just said in the beginning of the video that uh, at my conference, I will have a um, my friend who is a legal advocate. And she's going to be discussing that because you don't go in there and talk about narcissist abuse. Uh, but she's going to uh, talk to you guys about what to say, what not to say, how to look for lawyers, um, you know, uh, and some of the dispelling some of the myths about people going in in these situations. But, yes, she will be uh, Arlene. I need you to contact me. I've already just be real is already going to be there. Arlene, I want you to contact me, um, please. Thank you so much, but Carly, uh, Ar Arlene, I want you to contact me because I want to make sure that you're at the conference. So I want you to email me, okay? Um, I've already um, spoke with um, uh, Miss Chat. Uh, Just Be Real is going to be there. Tierra is going to be there. Miss Kelly is going to be there. And if I have some other moderators on here that you know you're my moderator on there, I need you to contact me. I need you to contact me because I want to make sure that you guys are there. How do you leave a church full of narcs who keep slandering you? leave <laughs> too easy uh can you can you inform how to prevent permanent psychosis uh not on this video because that's a lot of information not on this video but a lot of the information that i gave you um should ass assist you a lot of the information on this video go back and listen to the video that should answer your question that should that should um answer your question what do you do when you have a 19-year-old daughter who's a narcissist? Is she living in the home or is she not living in the home? You know, because that's kind of, Tammy, I can't really answer that question because that's that's not a general question. That's a personalized question. That's a personalized question where you have to contact me one-on-one -on -one time, okay, one-on-one -on -one because I need to know your situation. So sometimes I can't answer your question because I need more information on you personally. And if you need, if I need more information on you personally, I need a one-on-one -on -one with you. Um, so you guys, my time is up. I'm going to go over here to clubhouse. Um, just be around. I might need just 15. I'm going to do 15 minutes on clubhouse. As soon as I go over to clubhouse, give me 15 minutes on clubhouse. Okay. And I know I'm running over to nine 30, but, um, I was answering some questions, but just give me 15 minutes on clubhouse when I transfer over to clubhouse. Okay. Because I just want to make this last statement. So you guys remember the conference is July 31st. When you go online, you can go register. Um, give me this evening. Well, I'm not going to do it tonight. I'm going to do it tomorrow. Um, for those of you that are interested in the uh, group rates, and remember the group rates, if you if you five uh, uh, if you have a group of five, your your group of five would be seven hundred dollars. So that's one hundred and forty dollars per person. If you do a group of ten, it's twelve hundred dollars. So it's one hundred and twenty dollars per person. And if you do a group of twenty, it'll be two thousand, which is a hundred dollars per person. If you're VIP, you want to do five is fourteen hundred dollars, which is two eighty per person. And if you do ten, that's twenty five hundred dollars. That's two hundred and fifty dollars per person. VIP, that's totally separate. VIP, contact me because um, I will contact you personally. But for the groups, group of five, seven hundred. Group of ten, twelve. Group of twenty, uh, two thousand. That's a deal. Now, if those of you just want to do individual, that's the prices that's on there. Give me till tomorrow to update it. Um, but when you, you know, I just want one representative, if you get your group together, have them pay you and then you pay the fee, you pay the fee that's on there. If you've already paid me, then contact me so that I can give you the difference because a lot of you have already paid. And so if you're bringing a group, if you bring in a group and you want that group rate, I will reimburse you for the, for the uh, amount that you've already paid. Uh, this difference between the amount that you've already paid and what I'm offering as a group. Okay. And so, um, uh, uh, hopefully I really, I'm telling you guys, I want you guys to be there. You bring your tissues, you know, you put your, 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 uh, your counselor on speed dial, 
you know, whatever you do. Yeah, you can come to Texas. You can be there with me or you can be on Zoom with me. OK. And, and the group rates apply to Zoom as well. OK. So I appreciate you guys being here. My name is Dr. Carmen Bryant. Please subscribe to my channel. It is Dr. Carmen Bryant, Overcoming Narcissist Abuse. Share the videos, especially this one and the last one. Share the videos so that you can help somebody. You'd be surprised at the people that are around you that you have no idea are going through what they're going through. When I started making the videos, it came, it, I don't even know why I was surprised, but people around me just started talking to me, even people that I've known for years, people I was stationed with, people that were my soldiers. I've had some of my soldiers contact me, my old soldiers. I've had people contact me and like, man, you know, I this is, and I didn't even know. But starting to make these videos, I began to realize, man, share these videos so that you can get this information out. You'd be surprised at how many people around you are going through what they're going through. But I appreciate you guys being here. If you want coaching, you can contact me at Dr. Carmen Bryant, which is D-R-C-A-R-M-E-N-B-R-Y-A-N-T at Outlook.com. So Dr. Carmen Bryant at Outlook.com. If you want coaching services, contact me. I will provide you with my rates, my fees for services, and those of you that need counseling. I do not provide counseling for those of you that are out of state. I cannot. My license do not, do not allow me to do that. I can only provide you with coaching. In the state of Washington, contact me because my books fill up very fast for counseling. So my books are very full on counseling, but you can go to betterhelp.com forward slash Dr. Carmen, and you will get a discounted rate. They give you a 10% discount because you're using that link. And I do, I do get commission off of that, but I'm telling you, I've had so many people tell me so many good things about the counselors on betterhelp.com. And a lot of them do understand narcissist abuse. So make sure you go check out betterhelp.com forward slash Dr. Carmen so that you can get a counselor and then go get you a coach. Cause some of you guys, just from what we were talking about today, you realize, yes, I need a counselor. So I appreciate you guys being here with me. I'm looking for, I, you guys have no idea how excited I am about this conference because I'm, I'm, you know, I, I'm a teacher, but I also become the student. And so when I'm talking, I'm the teacher. When I sit down and I listen to everyone, my guests speak, I become the student and I never, ever stop learning. Never, ever stop learning until the day you die. You're going to be learning something. And I appreciate you guys. I love each and every one of you. I'm looking forward to you guys being at this conference. I thank you so much for your support. I'm so excited. You have no idea. So you guys take care of yourself. Okay. You guys have a good evening. Good night.